In this video, we are going to discuss about diversion head works and its components, it includes the comparison between weir and barrage as well as the failure modes of weir. This presentation is prepared by Anise K. Assistant Professor Department of Civil Engineering MEA, Engineering, College, Parenthal Mana At first, let us start with head work. Any hydraulic structure supplying water to the off-taking canal is called a head work. Head works are two different types. Storage head work. Diversion head work. Diversion head work are the type of head work which serves as to direct the required supply of water into the canal from river. There are two different types of diversion head work. Temporary head work. Example for this type of head work are temporary buns constructed every year. Permanent head work, examples are weir and barrages constructed permanently. Storage head work stores water during the period of excess supplies in the river and releases it when demand overtakes the available supplies. Example is dam. A diversion head work can perform the following functions. It raises the water level in the river so that commanded area can be increased. It regulates the intake of water into the canal. Diversion head work controls the silt entry into the canal. It reduces the fluctuations in the level of supply in the river. Diversion head work stores water for a small period. Figure shows various components of a typical diversion head work. It is having the following parts. Weir or barrage. Fish ladder. Divide wall. Under sluices. Head regulator. Silt excluder guide banks, and, marginal buns. At first, let us discuss about weir and barrage. They are the structures provided in a diversion headwork, across the river to raise the water level for diverting it into canal. Weir is a solid construction across the river to raise the water level to fixed level. But barrage is a structure having movable shutters which can raise or lower the water level to required height. Weir may be sometimes provided with a shutter known as crest shutter to raise water level to more height. Now let us move to the comparison of weir and barrage. Weir is a solid construction put across the river to raise the water level, but in the case of barrage, there is no solid construction across the river, and heading up of water is done by shutter. When we check the cost, then weir is less costlier than barrage, in the case of weir, no attention is required during the time of flood, but for barrage, we need to raise or lower the shutter according to the requirement, silt deposition is a problem in the case of weir, which will make weir ineffective after long time of usage. But for barrage, there is no issue of silt deposition, in a weir, we won't have any control over the water level, while in a barrage we can increase or reduce the water level. Here we can see typical example of a weir and barrage. In a weir, we will be having a solid construction across the river but in a barrage there will be a shutter used for raising or lowering of water level. Now we are moving to the topic. Types of weir. First type of weir is vertical drop weir. Figure shows a vertical drop weir, a crest gate may be provided to store more water during flood period. At the upstream and downstream ends of impervious floor cut off piles are provided. Launching apron are provided both at upstream and downstream ends of floor to safeguard against scouring action. A graded filter is provided immediately at the downstream end of impervious floor to relieve the uplift pressure. This type of weir is suitable for any type of foundation. Next type of weir is sloping weir of concrete. This type of weir is suitable for soft sandy foundation. It is used where difference in weir crest and downstream riverbed is not more than 3 meter. Hydraulic jump is formed when water passes over the sloping glassy. Weir of this type is of recent origin. The third type of weir is, parabolic weir, figure shows the shape of a typical parabolic weir. A parabolic weir is almost similar to spillway section of dam. The weir body wall for this weir is designed as low dam. A cistern is provided at downstream. The last type of weir is, dry stone slopping weir. It is a dry stone or rock fill weir. It consists of body wall, and in upstream and downstream, 
dry stones are laid in the form of glassy with some intervening core wall. Now we are moving to the topic, failure modes of weirs on permeable soils. There are mainly four different types of failure modes for a weir, first one is, failure by piping or undermining. Water from the upstream side continuously percolates through the bottom of the foundation and emerges at the downstream end of the weir or barrage floor. The force of percolating water removes, the soil particles by scouring at the point of emergence. As the process of removal of soil particles goes on continuously, a depression is formed which extends backwards, towards the upstream through the bottom of the foundation. A hollow pipe-like formation thus develops under the foundation, due to which the weir or barrage may fail by subsiding. This phenomenon is known as failure by piping or undermining, next type of failure is failure by direct uplift. The percolating water exerts an upward pressure on the foundation of the weir or barrage. If this uplift pressure is not counterbalanced by the self-weight of the structure, it may fail by rapture. Third type of failure is due to hydraulic jump. When the water flows with a very high velocity over the crest of the way R or over the gates of the barrage, then hydraulic jump develops. This hydraulic jump causes a suction pressure or negative pressure on the downstream side, which acts in the direction uplift pressure. If the thickness of the impervious floor is not sufficient, then the structure fails by rapture. Last type of failure is by scouring. During floods, the gates of the barrage are kept open, and the water flows with high velocity. The water may also flow with very high velocity over the crest of the weir. Both the cases can result in scouring effect on the downstream, and on the upstream side of the structure. Due to scouring of the soil on both sides of the structure, its stability gets endangered by shearing. Now we are going to discuss about the remaining components of diversion head rock, next one we are discussing is under sluices or scouring sluices, the scouring sluices are the openings provided at the base of the weir or barrage. These openings are provided with adjustable gates. Normally, the gates are kept closed. The suspended silt goes on the depositing in front of the canal head regulator. When the silt deposition becomes appreciable, the gates are opened and the deposited silt is loosened with an agitator mounting on a boat. The muddy water flows towards the downstream side through the scouring sluices. The gates are closed. But, at the period of flood, the gates are kept opened. Next one is the divide wall. The divide wall is a long wall constructed at right angle to the weir or barrage. It may be constructed with stone masonry or cement concrete. On the upstream side, the wall is extended just to cover the canal regulator, and on the downstream side, it is extended up to the launching apron. The functions of the divide wall are as follows. To form a still water pocket in front of the canal head, so that the suspended silt can be settled down, which then later can be cleared through the scouring sluices from time to time. It controls the eddy current or cross current in front of the canal head. It provides a straight approach in front of the canal head. It resists the overturning effect, on the weir or barrage caused by the pressure of the impounding water. The fish ladder is provided just by the side of the divide wall, for the movement of fishes. Rivers are important source of fishes. There are various types of fish in the river. The nature of fish varies from type to type. But in general, the tendency of fish is to move from upstream to downstream in winters, and from downstream to upstream in monsoons. This movement is essential for their survival. Due to construction of weir or barrage, this movement gets obstructed, and is detrimental to the fishes. For the movement of the fishes along the course of the river, the fish ladder is essential. In the fish ladder, the baffle walls are constructed, in the zigzag manner so that, the velocities of flow within the ladder does not exceed 3 meter per second. The width, length, and height of the fish ladder depends on, the nature of the river and the type of the weir or barrage. Canal head regulator is a structure, which is constructed at the head of the canal to regulate the flow of water is known as canal head regulator. It consists of a number of pairs, which divide the total width of the canal into a number of spans which are known as bays. The pier consists of a number of tiers on which, the adjustable gates are placed. 
The gates are operated from the top by suitable mechanical device. A platform is produced on the top of the piers for the facility of operating the gates. Again some piers are constructed on the downstream side of the canal head to support the roadway. Next component is a silt excluder, which is a structure in the under sluices pocket to pass the silt laden water to the downstream so that only clear water enters into the canal through head regulator. The bottom layer of water which are highly charged with silt pass down the silt excluder and escape through the under sluices. Guide banks are provided on either side of the diversion headworks for a smooth approach to the structure. Marginal bunds are provided on either side of the river upstream of diversion headworks to protect the land and property which is likely to be submerged during ponding of water in floods. Thanks for watching.